It's been a while, and my neighbor's driving off in his underground racing uh, Audi uh, R8. But anyway, we're back in the shop, listening to that, working on this. Let's see what we can get done today. Okay, before we get started, it has been a while. Uh, middle of May. I have two kids in baseball. Um, I don't know. I probably was complaining about it back then too, but it was really windy and it was raining a lot. So we had a ton of rain out games. So we crammed like two and a half months worth of baseball games into a month and a half. So May and June turned into the month of baseball. We were averaging four to five games a week um, between the two teams plus practices. It was all consuming. I loved every second of it. I could sit and watch baseball all day long. Uh, that's my jam. But that's where I've been. It's been crazy. Um, I tried to work on the truck, but it just, it was too much. I was trying to just, I, it was trying to do too much. So I back burned I have not, actually not even been down in the shop to look at the truck um, since, I don't know, early June. But anyway, uh, back down here today, I need to get uh, going. I got um, some terminals to finish up the wiring here for everything up here so we can wire in the unit finish hooking up the fans finish hooking up the trainer switch i've got all of that so that's what i'm gonna do today i actually went to yesterday so what is today sunday yesterday was the c10 shindig in kansas city um really good show it was blazing hot it was like 101 102 um and then it rained anyway so they shortened up the show but anyway we went out, i went out there and uh i did not take the truck obviously because it's not running, which sucks. I registered for it, but eh, whatever. That's how it goes. Um, I was looking for ideas on how to run these lines here. And um, in typical fashion, I was trying to make it too hard. So I, uh, sorry, I don't know where to look at the camera at here. Um, everybody kind of just drapes them on the fender. So uh, I'm going to do it real nice and elegantly. I was trying to make it too hard. I was trying to make it too simple, too clean. Um, this is not that kind of truck. Even show trucks that were built by very reputable shops just had them kind of laying out there. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, it's an old truck. I don't know. I'm not going to hide it all. I'm not, I mean, I, I, I kind of wanted to hide it all, but it's, it's just too much work. Uh, stressing me out. So I got all that figured out, I guess. I don't know. But that's, that's not today's problem. Today's problem is the wiring. We're going to kind of get that figured out. Um, and the EVAP line, uh, drain line, down there. Um, I got to drill the hole through the bottom of the um, floorboard for that. I did get a hose for that, and I'll kind of show over that. I'm going to kind of go over everything I have right now. Um, I'm going to flip the camera around. I got a pretty trick hose for that, and um, that's about it. Um, I did pick up a uh, Motion Rakes Works. Um, they call it an underdrive, but I never understood the under overdrive. Anyway, it's a larger diameter um, alternator pulley to slow this down because I've actually cooked one of these once because when you're turning 6,500 RPM, this thing is way over its design limits. Um, I think it's supposed to spin at like a maximum of, I want to say 18,000 RPM, but with the stock pulleys on the crank and on the alternator, it's zinging along at like 22,000. So I've actually cooked one. I don't want to cook another because these are not cheap. So I, uh, I got that. Um, I probably am going to just get it running first before I put that on because I have to go buy yet another belt. Um, <clears throat> we'll see. I don't know. Problem for another day. Pretty boring stuff for you guys. I apologize. Anyway, let me get the camera flipped around and let's kind of go over what I've got and what I'm going to do today. So I don't remember what I have and have not gone over. So some of this may be uh, repetitive. But anyway, plan of attack today is wiring up the trinary switch, getting the wires back in here, um, trying to get all of this stuff sorted. Um, I've got my two fan ground wires here. I've got the gr two ground wires coming from the vintage air unit and the one power wire coming from the vintage air unit. I've got a wire here that runs down to the trinary switch. Now the trinary switch, to add to the confusion, <clears throat> we've got a red wire coming off the compressor, which converts to a blue wire, which goes into a black wire. Black wire back out of the switch into a different color blue wire that goes into the vintage air unit. Now this wire here is coming from the vintage air unit, goes through here, pressure checks, it comes back out, through the darker blue wire into the red wire engages the clutch that's one thing i have to wire up 
Now, the other thing I'm going to wire up in the event that my pressure sensor does not work, which uh, my buddy in Springfield, he got his air conditioner running and it's doing some crazy stuff. So kind of waiting for him to sort out that. But anyway, the other half of the trinary switch is the um, fan control, which is the blue wires. I know, same color blue as this. So confusing. I don't know why they chose so many different colors of wire. I mean, probably because this is made by somebody. The compressor is made by Sandin. They all choose their own wire, but I think I would have probably figured out a wire pattern of some sort. But anyway, nonetheless, just my OCD kicking in. So the blue wire is coming out of here. Um, they, these are not uh, polarity sensitive because it's just a micro switch inside there. So it's either closed or it's open. One of the wires, well, both of them are going to come out of here. Go back through. I put a uh, bulkhead fitting in here. It's actually just a pass through. I'm going to loom these up real nice, and they're going to kind of come up and over to here. <clears throat> so they both go through to here. One of those wires goes to ground. One of them is going to go to temporarily. Right now, I have these uh, pigtails coming off of my relays. Um, I got a fan one and fan two, uh, green being fan one and blue being fan two. So sticking with the GM color coding. So I am going to try different scenarios. If that pressure switch does not work, which I'm leaning towards, it's not going to work, but it actually does. Uh, my buddy said that that pressure switch does sense the pressure and bumps his idle. So it's going to serve some use. It just won't control the fans like I like. But anyway, I'm going to try with the, the, with the trinary switch different scenarios for now. Just going to have some quick disconnects on these wires so I can bounce them around. If I want to do two, uh, both fans on low speed or one on high, just to kind of see how it reacts in the truck with this giant cavernous uh, engine bay that just seems to collect heat, um, which setup works better. I have a funny suspicion that it's going to need more than the two fans on low speed, but we're going to see. So I have got the other half. So what I did was I've got these, uh, I think these are GT280 uh, Delphi connectors. Um, I buy these off of, uh, <clears throat> um, it just depends on if it, a lot of times you can get them. For, there's a, a, a parts guy on Amazon, Dell City, I think it's called. Maybe it isn't. I'd have to look again. I'll put a link in the description that will sell these things in it kind of as a kit. It comes with the male and female, comes with uh, both terminals, uh, the TPA connector, which um, is kind of a rare thing on these, actually, these GT280s, but the TPA connector, which is this here, this gray thing that keeps the wires from really pulling out, but, you know, this is not a high stress situation, so they're not necessarily needed, but anyway, I've got a female and a male, so you can't flip them around, so the female being the fan control and the male being the uh, um, clutch control, so I've got their corresponding terminals here, and our well connectors and then i got the terminals and i'm going to crimp on um this here is going to be for the ground um i like using these waterproof uh if i'm buying just a couple onesie twosies i won't buy the name brand i like using the 3m stuff but um these actually work really well um, just make sure that they're the waterproof ones they have a heat shrink this blue here heat shrinks and it's also got an adhesive in it so that makes things a lot nicer for corrosion so i've got the 16 gauge to 14 gauge 3 8 ring terminal which i actually use <clears throat> the factory you probably can't see that there's a bolt right if i can get my finger on there we go there that's the factory ground bolt so uh for the headlight so i use that for all oh, actually all my relays and i'm gonna use it for this and then also um about these 10 gauge and 12 you know, 10 to 12 gauge um ring terminals for 3 8 for the battery for the um both the ground uh, and the positive for the vintage air and the fans um, i bought these here too um, so i take out the stock bolt on my side post and i put these in there so this actually will go in place of the stock bolt that's this portion right here and then you also get a uh, terminal a stud which i'm not gonna be able to get off of course but anyway so i just put those on there easy peasy lemon squeezy so enough talking. Let's get to work and see what we can get done today. Um, bust out the label maker. I'm going to label all these wires. I did not do it on this side of the connection, the splice here, because this um, vintage air or whoever makes this uh, trainer switch had this nice plastic sleeve on there. So I left it alone. I've got a zip tie on here holding these uh, together because they're going to go real nice. And that's going to sit down. I'm actually going to probably see if I can get it on here do something like this where they sit 
nicely together. Maybe on the inside right here, or actually maybe on the side of the, don't know yet, but I'm gonna put those like that. Make it nice, so on your wires, on the other side of these things, so visualize the four wires coming out the other side of this connection, on this side, I'm gonna have labels so that I remember what these are. All my wires get labeled. I just use a cheap label machine. I've had this thing, my wife bought this thing, I don't know how long ago, and I put, let's see if I can get it open here, <clears throat> quarter inch white label in it. And then I use clear heat shrink on top of that. It is a lot cheaper than buying a, a true heat shrink label maker. Um, I already had that one. I buy the uh, refill kits. They're like seven bucks and clear heat shrink is really cheap as well. So all this will be labeled, all the, the grounds, all the positives, uh, the grounds for the fans, all these wires. So that when I take it apart someday, which inevitably I will, I know what all these wires do. All right, let's see how this comes out. So these things, they come, and I, the only recommendation I have, and I didn't do it here, was print them in one print, I guess you'd say. So each one of these, I printed them on, you know, as one, uh, one label. But you can put, you know, just list them out and then just put, you know, a double space between, you know, I've got fan ground and fan trigger here. <clears throat> print them in one thing it's waste this thing the way it works is it has this uh from here to here is waste every time because the knife is when you pull the trigger there well you really can't see when the cover's open but this orange is the knife so don't do what i do um anyway so what i do here is i am going to grab some heat shrink um it comes in various sizes um i think this will work. Yeah. So what I'll do is I make, I just, I just buy this stuff on Amazon. It's nothing special. It's just, um, I don't know, something made in China, but it, uh, it works. What I do is I kind of figure out, you know, like this one, that looks like a good length. I don't know. I just try to make it look custom so it doesn't look like I just winged it, even though I am kind of winging it. Uh, you want it to be a little longer than the actual label itself. So, Literally all I do here, and these wires are wires that I had. Uh, these are some GXL wires. They have, the color has no bearing on anything, so that's why I'm labeling everything. Um, like I said earlier, the wires coming from the vintage air unit are all different colors, so I've had some purple and I had some gray wire. So my gray wire is going to be my ground wire. That goes all the way back to my, uh, sorry, let me put that on camera. It goes all the way back to the chassis ground. So on the, uh, um, course sport so all i do is i just wrap it on there like that and it sticks pretty good what the clear does is you just keep it on there and it keeps it um visible so otherwise the adhesive probably i'm betting that this cheap adhesive they put on there would probably not do so great so <sighs> change my mind here i'm gonna move this a little further away from the terminal so that if i ever have to redo this there is some room so that's it. You just literally put it on there, wrap it around the wire like so. Like I say, it sticks pretty good. And then I just come back over it and put this on top. And I'm sure I've seen somebody do this somewhere. So you can see the adhesive's already, well, that's because I pulled it off once, but the adhesive already is letting go. It doesn't like to flex and move and all that stuff. You put that on there like that, and then we'll get the heat gun on it, and it'll suck it down real nice. from burning down my shop so kind of get all the air bubbles out there get the adhesive to stick down and that's it I need to hit that side a little more nothing revolutionary guys it just works there it goes um i just like labeling all my work so that i don't have any problems later in life when uh you know i'm working on it or if i ever do decide to sell the truck somebody can pull this apart and underneath all of my um wire loom will be labels or like that one there. I don't know if you guys can read that, but that says fan ground. And then I've got to put the other one. It says, excuse my dirty desktop here, or my control bench here. I've been cleaning parts right here, so it's dirty. Um, I say fan trigger. 
And that's pretty much it. Pretty easy peasy. So let's knock this other one out real quick here for you guys and uh, keep moving along. Now we have two wires. They're labeled for my friend control from my trainer switch. So that's it. So now I'll just uh, wrap this up. Actually, I'm going to wrap it up as a loom with the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get up to the front of the truck and uh, terminate the other one here. Um, again, these are the GT280s. Um, when you click them together, this will seat down. Um, this gray thing inside of here uh, actually goes down and kind of locks it all together. One thing about these is it's kind of a pain, and I, I should probably watch a video, but there's to get these terminals back out, you have to pull this gray cover up and out, well, up to this release position, and you, know, you can kind of see on this one, I've, I've done it once accidentally. What I have is a little, a little hook that I can hook on the very bottom down here. You probably can't see it. There it is. There's a little hole next to my fingertip there. Hook it in there and pull it forward, and it'll release, and then you can stick your uh, terminal release tool in those two holes there. And pop them out otherwise good luck um, they're good connectors so that's pretty much it that's how i label my wires this is how i've done the entire truck um, and all my other videos uh, especially when i did the wiring for the uh, um, the, the ls swap uh, integrating all of the the actual truck harness uh, from american auto wire the psi conversions harness for the ls and the dakota digital stuff Kind of integrating all those together i use a lot of these gt280 terminals or connectors uh, even inside the truck i know they're waterproof and they're overkill but i did it anyway just because they're nice um, solid construction they're pretty cheap but just have everything labeled so that when i go back through like i did when i had to rewire this i know what all this stuff is and i don't have to go back and look through pictures and you know, try to figure out what did i do so that's it pretty simple i think it looks pretty good i think uh uh, Kevin at KSR would be proud with these things. Um, not as fancy as he does, but just nice stuff. Just figure do it nice once and don't have to worry about it. But quality, you know, Delphi stuff on here. Do it once. Don't, don't have to worry about it. Don't use butt connectors. Don't use any of that jazz. Um, I do have those uh, solderless uh, crimp splices that I'm going to use on some other stuff here. I um, used them on the other uh, when I did the LS swap, but... For taking things apart and having quality connectors these are this is the way to go quick audible uh i decided to pull the wheel off and the inner fender well out so which is tricky on a four post lift but what i do is i raise it up put a jack underneath the frame rail get it off the ground so um god that looks horrible it's dirty um here's all my wiring that i did earlier all of the wiring for the fans the headlights all that stuff up there you can see well, find the light there's the rest of it anyway here's my wires coming through so i've got a wire coming from there going through there i've got a wire coming from the vintage air going through there and i've got wires coming back through this way so i'm going to go ahead and get them all together loom them all up um i was trying to do it from the bottom side there and um or from the top side but i just couldn't get around to get do it evenly or nicely i should say so um yeah that's what i got right now so what I'm going to do is I'm poke those other wires through and just kind of start getting everything loomed together, make this thing look nice. Um, just easier to take the fender well, uh, inner fender out. Makes a whole lot more room. So I'll put it back in. Um, while in the process, I'm actually going to go buy new bolts because I kid you not, every single one of these, and I pull out one that's not, has been cross-threaded probably within an inch of its life at some point. All of the things are fine, but I'm going to chase all the holes and get new bolts because... This is getting ridiculous, taking those things off. Uh, I'm going to use an impact to get some of them out. So, <sighs> yeah. So, I'm going to get under here, get going, and get the rest of these wires. Push through and get things going here. Uh, make some progress, because I want to drive this thing before the air conditioner is not needed. I was able to get everything lined up up here. I've got the wires run. Um, right now, they just go through um, my grommet here. Uh, but I've got, on the back side is the fan control. On the front is the clutch control. There they are back and front so they kind of line up real nice um all i did was just kind of there's already some holes in here so i kind of have it zip tied down there and it turns 90 goes over here and 90 in um this kind of just hangs down here 
I don't know. You're not going to see that behind there, but uh, I'll have to figure something out. I was thinking maybe I could put something here to hold the wire up like that or something, but I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do there. But that's there. Uh, the wires are still... Um, I put it back down so I can actually work on it because it was too, too high off the ground for me. Um, yeah, so the wires, I kind of got them going every which way, trying to, to, you know, these are going here, that's going there. Um, these are my ground wires here for my fan. I got them. So everything is kind of, I've been working on, and there wasn't a whole lot of room back there, so I had my head jammed in here. Um, I've got the wires kind of routed so that they look. I don't have my light with me, but everything is kind of hidden back in there. So these wires here come along and join in and go down and around and underneath and clear for everything so nothing's rubbing on any metal or you know it's just kind of all there's a bundle that comes across here and now this way that kind of merge and they go down and to my relays and everything uh when i get it back up on the arrow i can show that but uh making progress um just spaghetti trying to make everything kind of logical and work um <clears throat> but this turned out really well so I really like how that looks um, with that uh, those two connectors there. I debated on going with a four connector, but I'd have to get into like a Molex, which I don't have the Molex crimpers. I ought to get them at some point because they have, they have real nice compact uh, connectors. But I ended up going with the, the two connectors uh, flipped, so you can't put them in the wrong way. Um, yeah, everything worked out great. So next up is going to be... Uh, um, Take the battery back out, um, get everything uh, lined up in here. Actually, before that, I've got to get... So these four wires that come through here right now, they're just poked through. So I've got to kind of route them. So one goes to ground, one goes to the harness for the Avenger. Um, one goes to the compressor, and then the other one goes up for my fans, kind of my temporary fans. So i got to run two up, one that way, and one that way. It's kind of make it all look, um, <clears throat> well, it doesn't have to look great, but it's underneath the battery box. But kind of just route them so that um, they're going the right direction. I did leave um, some excess back there, um, so there will be a little bit of wire back here. I like to do that just in case something needs to change. There's extra wire that we'll have to splice an extension on. But, um, yeah, I think that looks really good. I like that. So I can put the grill back in, and I'm done up here now, uh, which is great. Uh, one more thing off the checklist, tidy up all this wiring right here, throw some uh, terminals on those, that'll be done, put the fender back in, and, well, actually, I think I'm going to do my uh, hole for my condensate line first, because it actually pops out, like, right down there, so, kind of getting ahead here, but I'm thinking about it, so, what I did was, the Vintage Air kit came with kind of this plastic hose which conveniently was kinked in half so i've had it on a big giant screwdriver since i got the kit you can kind of see the kink right there i've used heat on it and everything else but it's still got a bit of a kink in it and that always bothered me so what i did because i can't leave well enough alone was i got a molded rubber hose a heater hose that's a half inch it's the part number there it's a gates part uh what it's going to do is it's going to run out of the so it's going to be oriented like this, and I'll have to cut this end off. But it's going to come out of the evaporator case, go through the firewall, and then turn. So my, my thought was, and I was talking to my buddy Shannon. He built his truck. So here's the fender liner out of it. So that thing is scratched up. It needs to be painted. But what it does is it's going to come down. It's going to come out like right here. So the vintage air thing was just going to dump water on there. And I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out. It's going to come through the firewall and immediately turn 90 degrees and go down. And then I'm going to run it down and out. So there's no water just running on this thing. Um, <clears throat> just one of those things that he suggested doing. I was like, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm going to do it right. That way, um, the vintage air kit comes with like that hose and then a 90. So I guess you could extend it all the way out. But that plastic hose just seemed awfully chintzy. I don't know um, if that's even a word. My grandpa used to say that word. But anyway, this seemed cheesy. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to run it down and I'm going to clean that firewall off. I guess I haven't had this fender well out in a while. That's all dirty. Um, run it all the way down so that there's no water just running on that thing, rusting it up. So getting ahead of myself. Uh, next up is the wiring. So let me go ahead and get uh, situated. Uh, I'm going to get it back up in the air. 
um, get the tire back off and, uh, just kind of keep going, keep plugging at it, man, we're getting close. I'm so excited. Um, yeah, enough rambling. Let's get back to work. Boy, after lots of wrangling, I finally got all the wires going where they need to go. Uh, this purple wire here is actually my trigger from the, uh, trinary switch. So that will be trimmed down shorter. We got a ground wire for the vintage air, ground wire for the fans, positive for the vintage air. And then that blue wire that goes up through there, and that is not as messy as it looks, it's just the lighting. Uh, that blue wire goes up to the red wire on the compressor. Like I said earlier, it's a menagerie of colors. I don't know why, but whatever. We got it figured out. Um, there's a lot going on under he underneath here, and I wish, truthfully, that when I wired the truck and put the LS in, I would have put the air conditioning at the same time because I could have integrated a lot of this stuff because a lot of it's trying to go back and put it into the loom that's already here and i don't know i'm just thankful this is underneath the um battery tray so you can't see any of this stuff um like i say it doesn't look as bad as it is because the camera's picking up the led lights crazy but oh that part's done so now i'm gonna go to the top side uh figure out my wiring here for the uh put my terminals on i got a gray wire you can kind of see it right there where my fingertips at that is the wire that goes to chassis ground. So I'm gonna put a terminal on that. I've got a ground lug up there I'm gonna use. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. So this is hard, hard work getting underneath here. The older I get, the harder it is to get around in these tiny little spaces. Um, so yeah, rule of thumb, if you're gonna be wiring the truck and or putting an LS in and doing wiring for that, do it all at the same time with the air conditioning. Um, I wish, truthfully, I wish for two reasons. Uh, wiring it would have been a whole lot easier, and B, it would have been cheaper, because uh, nothing's cheap anymore. So, that's it for now. I'm going to put um, <clears throat> some terminals on there, and then I'm going to turn my attention to drilling the hole up here for the uh, condenser drain. I don't know about where you guys live, but it is hot here. It's like 101 outside, and in my shop is actually in the ground, in the basement, so on three sides is in dirt so i have got a dehu that i run and this little thing has been screaming its heart out trying to keep the humidity down because our humidity is ridiculous i mean our dew points like in the mid 70s so our humidities outside is i don't know 70 80 percent it's ridiculous i don't know i'm ready to go south you guys can have this stuff back every year it's like this in august it sucks but anyway i'm belly aching because i'm sweating which is ridiculous but I have got the grounds terminated. I got uh, the, the three wires here, or the two wires here. My uh, fan one, fan two are terminated. I've got my power wire for my, sorry, that's focusing on my hand. Power wire for the vintage air. And then I've also kind of loosely run my uh, clutch wire, um, which again is, is blue, dark blue, light blue in the harness, dark blue coming out, going into a red. So I don't know, whatever. I think I would have. I've complained about that enough, but anyway, <clears throat> so we're all terminated. We're good to go. I had this one last wire. I've got to actually put, uh, I'm just going to put some spade uh, terminals on there for now because uh, like I said earlier in this video and in previous videos, I'm going to be doing some testing to see what works better with this setup. So I have the three relay set up. So the fan one coming from the computer will trigger both fans at half speed. So they're wired in parallel. Um, if that doesn't keep up, the computer will trigger fan two, which will run both of them at full speed. I got the same, uh, I just got some pigtails uh, from an earlier video. I have behind here, uh, you can't see them, uh, pigtails coming up that are fan one and fan two, just like they're coming for the computer, so that I can hook this purple wire, which you gotta know, I'm running out of colored wires here, so I've got purple that uh, goes through the trinary switch. So it goes from chassis ground out to the trinary switch and then back to this wire right here. And what that'll do is at a certain uh, pressure, I think it's pressure, I think it's 250 PSI inside the cooling or in the air conditioning system, it'll trigger this. This will drop to ground, which I'm gonna use um, to go to those two trigger wires from the computer. Um, you got to put a resistor and a diode in. We're not going to cover that today because I'm not going. I'm gonna actually going to move on. I'm going to start drilling this hole. But uh, I got to put a resistor and a diode in there. Um, long story short, the computer doesn't like seeing it go to ground without it triggering it going to ground, and it periodically runs a test signal down 
the line from the computer to the relay to make sure that the relays, in fact, are there and working. So you have to put a resistor and a diode in there to block the ternary switch from the computer so that it cannot see that it is uh, triggering. It's on another path to ground, um, so it won't trigger a check engine light. Anyway, long-winded short story there. Um, so everything is good here. So I'm going to go ahead and... Um, work on drilling that hole real quick and get that gun. Um, and then my check or my uh, to-do list uh, looks like heater hoses and AC hoses and then this here and then just putting it back together. I got to put the grill back in, um, just kind of get it kind of cleaned back up. So yeah, we're on a downhill slide here. Wiring is 99.9% .9 done minus this right here, which we will get to in the next video, I'm sure, because I want to get on to some stuff so I can get some uh, productivity done. So I've only got, like I said, I had a short yesterday. I've got two day or two weekends to get this done. Um, I've got a car show September 11th, but between now and then, I have a wedding to go to. So I am. Uh, it's a, in a family. I'm pretty strapped for time. So and the kids starting school and football. So uh, we're getting there. Um, yeah, so let me go ahead and get set up, and uh, I'm going to drill that thing. I've got a couple different hole saws, um, but anyway, let's go over that here once I get set up. Well, much like everything these days, it fought me, uh, the dang um, hole saw. So what I did was I drilled a pilot hole from the inside out, and then I got my hole saw in there, and I started it straight, and then I kind of turned it. So, I, you know, hole saws, they don't like to run you know, unless they're perfectly perpendicular to the material they're drilling in, they don't particularly like to do that um, unless everything's in a jig and fixtured. So it shattered and, and I cursed and yelled and screamed and, but we got it in there. So I'm not going to put that part of the video in there because that's not kind of, this, this isn't that kind of channel, <sighs> but it's in. So that is that uh, molded 90 degree. It's a Gates part. I will put the part number down below uh, for that. Oh man, so that's another thing off my list. So now I am down to just tiddly stuff. So I'm going to finish that up. I'm actually going to pull that back out, put touch up paint in that hole uh, so I don't have any rust issues. Um, just running through my head, I've got to uh, do this here real quick with the spade connectors and uh, resistor and diode. I have got to do AC hoses, heater hoses, put the fender back in, uh, put the seat back in, do the seat belts cut a little hole in the carpet where that line is going to go through right now it's just sitting down there um yeah it's getting really close finally so today's saturday so i'm hoping tomorrow i'm going to finish up almost everything so that we can get this thing driving at least i want to get the heater hoses at least hooked up so i can drive it and move it because it hasn't like i said in my short yesterday it hasn't really been well actually it hasn't been driven since december and it's killing me that it's sitting here um it's hotter than blazes outside so it's not like terrible killing me but i want to drive the thing so yeah we're getting there that's it i think today i'm going to call it quits uh, i'm going to go home and wring my clothes out and sit in the air conditioning for a little bit and uh uh enjoy this sunday afternoon well saturday it's on saturday oh man i got another day sweet uh enjoy this afternoon and we'll get back after it tomorrow and we'll finish this uh well i shouldn't say finish it because i don't want to jink myself but we'll get her really close I appreciate everybody watching. Please like and subscribe um, to the world's longest vintage air installation. Um, an hour at a time. That's how my life goes these days. I have kids, they said. I love my kids. But, man, all the activities, it's, it's a lot sometimes. Anyway, enough rambling. I'm going to clean up and get out of here because it is roasting in here. I will see you guys tomorrow.